my name is Dr. Sean Thistle. I'm a practicing chiropractor and entrepreneur in the knowledge transfer and continuing education world, a faculty member at the Canadian Memorial Chiropractic College, and a medical legal consultant. Chiropractic has sort of evolved from you know, our origins in the late 1800s. Daniel David Palmer realized that adjusting or manipulating a spine can have some positive health benefits and kind of formalized that into a profession. So there are a lot of common myths about the chiropractic profession. One of them typically tends to come from the practitioners themselves by explaining to patients that there are misalignments in their spine or that their vertebral bones have moved out of place. There's no real good evidence that bones in the spine move statically and stay there and then we come and push them back into place. The bone out of place model uh, is not really supported by science. It's not really how our current understanding of how spinal manipulation has its effect uh, and how it works for patients. So it's a bit of an antiquated explanation. So perhaps a better explanation is that spinal manipulation helps to reduce stiffness in an area of the spine that just simply isn't moving well. One of the things that's commonly misunderstood in clinical practice by patients and practitioners is that if you have regular neck or back pain that you need imaging. Some practitioners even want to take repeated images to monitor for posture or vertebral misalignments and that sort of thing, but the evidence these days really doesn't support that practice and for most neck and back pain patients, imaging is not required. But a lot of chiropractors uh, rely on this as a way to get people to commit to a care plan and say, well, you have a, a, a misalignment in your neck, for example, or you have a lack of lordosis in your neck, which is going to lead to X, Y, and Z health outcome. Uh, it's not really a standard practice in our profession. There are some that do it, but it's not taught that way, and that's not standard of care uh, for our profession at this point. It shouldn't be standard of care for anybody. Perhaps not a myth about our profession, but one of my biggest pet peeves is when my colleagues like to anatomically body shame people about uneven shoulders or a short leg or something that they feel might be contributing to the patient's clinical scenario. Most of those findings are actually clinically meaningless. Often these changes are things that we can't modify with treatment anyway, and for the average patient with a small asymmetry, it's probably not the reason that you have neck pain, back pain, hip pain, or anything for that matter. Patients with neck or back pain are often told that they'll require months or even years of treatment to correct their problem. The evidence simply doesn't support this practice either. In fact, if you have neck or back pain and you're receiving treatment from a chiropractor or a physiotherapist, the evidence says that you're likely to recover well if you recover early in the treatment plan. So clinicians should be very aware of that in clinical practice and modify treatment accordingly if you're not getting better. So if you're new to chiropractic treatment and spinal manipulation, you might be a little bit concerned about what the noise is and what the cracking sound is. A lot of people think it's bones smashing together or things being ripped apart or torn, but that's not actually the case. It's very similar to if you take your finger and pull on it and hear a cracking sound at your knuckle. It's just a release of pressure uh, within the joint that gets that area of the spine moving. 